time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready, we're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning, it's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious May weekend? We're almost at summertime, man. You know, things are definitely on the up and up. Well, you know, Rod, we've got the uh, PGA Championship right out on Long Island at uh, Beth Page. An exciting tournament. And uh, it's one of the majors. Uh, they used to be in August. Now it's in May. And it's going to be uh, fun to watch tomorrow, today and tomorrow. Bob, nothing gets you more excited than a little little golf on the weekend. So uh, I can imagine uh, it's going to be a perfect weekend for you. It's glorious, son. It's glorious. <laughs> glorious. <laughs> Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to discuss vacation planning and retirement planning. We're going to break down your retirement plan the same way we would your next family vacation. We're going to talk about retirement assassins. Bob and I are going to discuss some silent, deadly financial killers that can unexpectedly derail your whole retirement, along with this week's financial propaganda where we call out the worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting. And we have our spotlight segment. We have our special guest. We have Aaron Dessen, a financial advisor at our firm. He's going to come on, review, and break down someone's real retirement plan for you. So let's hop to it. Bob, You know, it's often said that we spend more time planning our vacations than planning retirement. So we're going to trick our listeners this morning into planning their retirement by pretending like we're planning our next vacation. So here's a list of things we need to think about. And I think the first obvious one, Bob, is you know we need to figure out where we're going to go on that vacation or retirement and how we're actually going to get there. Yeah, Rod, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, that's what retirement planning or that's what planning is all about is where are we going and how are we going to get there? I mean, it's no different. It's You have a destination in mind. Well, you know, my destination is to have a lifetime of income I can't outlive. So when you talk about retirement, you talk about vacation planning, it's identical. Yeah, well, the irony is when we do our retirement planning, we never think about the end in mind, Bob. We end up saying, okay, I've got a 401k account over here. I've got a brokerage account, savings account. I've got all these different investments, but we never took the time to say, where are we going? It's kind of like just randomly you know, getting online and starting to plan booking your trip and booking the hotel and everywhere else, and you have no idea where that's going to take you. You don't know where the destination is first, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. So what you're saying, Rai, is people plan really in detail for their vacation, but when it comes to retirement planning, they use that strategy of, well, I hope I'm doing everything right. Is, is hope a strategy? <laughs> it's a terrible strategy, whether you're planning your vacation or your retirement. And that's why we came up with the A to B process, Bob, where you're going from point A to point B, we like to say with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. And the key to that is point B is where you're going. And when you figure out where you're going, we like to say you want to reverse engineer back. Once you know where you're going, then you can actually build your plan around that. It's kind of like building a, a GPS, right, Ry? It's going to keep you on track to tell you you know, where you are now in terms of, of, of achieving your goal. So when you're planning your trip, you you pick the place you're going to go, and then you work backwards to you know when you're leaving. Same thing with retirement planning. So what are some of the similarities, Rye, when it comes to planning your vacation and planning your retirement, like the goals? What kind of goals should you be planning for? Yeah. So I think one of the big ones, just like your vacation, is you got to figure out where you're going to stay, right? When it's a vacation, okay. it's, uh, you know, I gotta get, I'm going to do an Airbnb. Am I going to stay in a hotel? Am I going to stay on my friend's couch? Hopefully not. Uh, but the same thing, right? One of the biggest decisions you want to make when you're going to retire is, are you going to downsize, Bob, which you did actually recently in the last couple of years? That's a great point, Ryan. Are, are you going to have a five-star retirement or are you going to have a motel retirement? So, <laughs> you know, you can pick, you know, you can pick a really high-end place to go on vacation or you can, you can pick a real low-end. What can you afford? And that's where you got to work backwards, right, to see what makes sense, what fits your pocketbook. But what about... What are things that happen that are unexpected, right? I mean, are, do anything unexpected happen on someone's vacation? Oh, yeah. I mean, let's whatever we budget for vacation, we always end up spending more. And your retirement is no different, Bob. The thing that drives me crazy is when you hear those statistics, well, you're only going to spend 
80% of what you spend now in retirement. And you and I know that's just not true. Wait a minute, Ryan. If that's if that's out there, would somebody please alert all of our clients that that's what they're supposed to be doing in retirement? Because all of our clients are spending more money in retirement than they ever spent while they were working. And that's why it's so important when you're running your projections, throw the kitchen sink at it, add in all those what we call ancillary expenses. And that can be everything from Bob, hey, maybe you're retired now, you are going to take some great vacations every year. That could be another five grand a year, 10 grand a year, but other things like healthcare costs, which are going to be one of our largest costs in retirement, you've got to factor that in. Well, you're going to have a lot of expenses, right? Like if you stay in the same home, you know, your air conditioner wears out, your heater works out, your roof wears out. You know, hurricane comes through. Next thing you know, you got to put new landscaping in. These are a lot of unexpected expenses. So, you know, when you're on vacation, don't you make adjustments, right? If you have a big night out and end up spending more, you don't spend as much the next night, right? Well, how do you do that in retirement? Well, that's why retirement's got to be a working document. You can't just plug in the numbers and then just hope that that plan works over the next 10, 15 years. You know, what we say is you want to plan regularly. And that's why you want to sit down and run these numbers with your financial advisor at least every 12 months to see where you are, what you've spent. Have you gone over budget, under budget? And that's also why we have our 360 portal, Bob, so we can kind of monitor expenses as we go along as well, which is really helpful. Yeah. So that keeps you up to date every day of your life if you care to look. Now, I know you're going on vacation, Ry. What kind of planning are you doing while you're going to be away? Well, the big thing is someone's got to cover me in the office. So, Bob, I expect you're going to work overtime. <laughs> no, but, but that's so kind why, of the point. Why should anything ever be different, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. No, and that's the key thing, right? It's like when you're away, let's face it, you're no better than the week before vacation. How organized are you, right? You clear off everything on your desk. You make sure that everyone has the appropriate paperwork and do what they need to do when you're gone. And that's the same thing with your planning, Bob. It, you might be the spouse that has the interest in the finances, but if you're gone, you could be leaving your spouse in the dark. That's the real question. You know, if you're in every relationship that I've ever worked with in 45 years, there's always been one very focused, interested spouse in the finances, and there's always been an uninterested spouse. And the question you got to ask yourself right now is what happens if I'm gone? You know, how's that uninterested spouse going to get up to speed? Am I organized? Am I as organized with my finances as Ryan is with his business the day before he goes away? Exactly. And this is kind of like that catalyst, Bob, that kick you know, in the rear that says, all right, I'm going to sit down with my planning now. I'm going to get everything together, tally it up, put it in one place. And that's why I do love our 360 portal because we actually have an online place where you can put all those important documents. You, know, you can have updates on all of your assets daily. But by doing that once... It just gets everything in sync. So God forbid you're not here and your spouse has to take care of things. Everything's already set up for them. You know, you're doing a great disservice to your spouse not to get these things organized. And it's just like that week before vacation where you just get everything in order. So Ry, going on vacation is no different than planning for retirement. It's all about having the details written down, updated, and also having someone who can take care of things if you're not here. Exactly. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need this kind of catalyst. I need to get my financial life in order now. I've been procrastinating. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our famous total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic financial review where we look at the whole picture. All you need to do is bring in those statements print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial 360 portal where you get a bird's eye view of your entire financial life and we can start looking at all the critical components. Everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your investment portfolio you don't know you're paying. And those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. Have you been feeling the swings in the stock market? In December, when it sold off aggressively, were you protected? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof and protect your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. How are you going to replace your income if you're going to retire soon or you're retired now? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase that income to fill in your income gap in retirement so you have income for life. And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844 752 
six six nine two. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. If you're one of our next ten callers, you've saved over two hundred thousand for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there won't be a plan unless you call or text eight four four seven five two six six nine two. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pain of no pain, no gain financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain market update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, the Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management. And a week ago, Friday, the U.S. raised tariffs on $200 billion of Chinese products. Predictably, this week, China responded with tariffs of its own, rattling the markets for a drop of just over 2% this past Monday. Now, this response appears to have been more sentiment driven than fundamental, since the market rallied strongly for the rest of the week on good economic news and continued good earnings reports. U.S. housing starts in April rolled in about 3% better than expected. First time jobless claims came in at 212,000 versus the consensus view for 219,000. And the Philadelphia Fed's business outlook gauge hit 16.6 in May versus the estimate for only 9.3. With the majority of companies reporting their earnings for the quarter, 74% have beaten expectations and earnings grew year over year versus the consensus expectation that earnings would actually decline 3% from last year. So is the correction over? Or for that matter, did we even have a correction? See, a stock market correction is generally defined as a decline of at least 10% from the recent high. And now with most indices, barely 2 or 3% below the recent highs that we set just this time last month, we can hardly call this a correction. However, volatility has been extreme over the last two weeks, and volatility is simply the price of admission for above average return in risk assets like stocks. Now, all dips in history in the market have been temporary, and therefore, all dips are buying opportunities, especially in a big, booming bull market like we've had over the past 10 years. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio that's appropriate to my goals, to my dreams, to my risk tolerance? Why sit there and wonder when you can know? All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place, you should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure you have the most common sense practical advice you can use for your planning investing. And that's why we put together our new guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. We break down five simple ways that you can save money on taxes, everything from utilizing a health savings account to Roth conversions to a 401k. We give you five ways to put more money in your pocket, saving on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555 555- 888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make invested. We show you five ways to save on taxes this year. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888 and download your free copy. So Bob, in the movies, whenever there's that assassin, they're always elusive and their target never sees them coming. So like the movies, our financial plan is always at risk of being disrupted by what we would call unforeseen variables. So I thought we could discuss some of these retirement assassins that can derail everything we're trying to do to get to our goals in retirement. And the first thing I think about is you can always have that unexpected stock market crash. You know, Rye, stock market crashes are simply volatility. Um, Yes. They don't happen that often. They don't happen that often. But you know what? You know who created volatility? 
I think the the volatility gods, Bob. They did, Ryan. And you know the reason they did was to keep the uninformed poor. We spend <laughs> so much time worrying about something that's temporary, that's never been permanent, that we don't invest properly because we're not focused on what's really important, which is income. Yeah, and I would argue it's probably because your plan is not set up correctly. Because the one thing we find is a lot of times you're taking way too much risk in the markets and you forget you're a lot closer to retirement now than maybe you were 10 years ago, Bob. And if your portfolio is dependent on the market going up, that's a really bad strategy as you get into what we call that financial red zone where you're getting close to retirement or you're in retirement now. That's what I love about our planning, right? Because we were able to go out and back test, you know, what if? What if we do have another correction like we did in 2000 or 2008? You know, how does that impact your portfolio? And how did you react back then? And how should you be reacting now? And what steps can you take right now in the event there is a stock market crash? It's better to be prepared than to react emotionally. Yeah, and I think the big thing is, Bob, you have to ask yourself, is my portfolio, is it market-driven or is it income driven? And the thing is, in retirement, as we know, it's much more reliable to know that you have income payments coming in as opposed to wondering what's going to happen in the stock market next. Like, I would never want my retirement plan to be contingent upon is this deal with China going to go through? That's the wrong strategy. Absolutely right. It's really about having a process, a discipline, you know, based on history, based on evidence, where you have the highest probability of success. I mean, it's not a competition. You know, it's about achieving your personal goals. Right. And I think the, the first start to do that is to figure out what are your income needs going to be and how do you build your portfolio? So it's more like a pension where you're getting regular income from that portfolio to meet those goals on a monthly and an annual basis. And that's the first thing you need to look at when you're building your portfolio. Is it going to cover my income needs, Bob? So true, right? So, you know, stock market assassins, eh, you know, it's something we can account for. But what are some of the other assassins out there we have to be aware of? You've got to plan for taxes ahead of time. If you're smart about it and you proactively do that, you can save money on taxes. But if you don't plan, you're going to end up paying a lot more in taxes than you have to. Yeah, it really is. It, it, it amazes me every time when we sit down with you that you have such an inefficient tax strategy in your portfolio. You're paying unnecessary taxes, capital gains taxes. You you're, you're have income that's taxable on a state and, and federal level. There's so many ways that you can avoid taxes legally, You know, still be a patriot, but you know, keep what's yours. Which is a great analysis to run. So not only figuring out, okay, how much income can I generate from my portfolio, but the other key to that, Bob, is can I make my income tax advantaged? You know, using things like tax-free bonds and qualified dividend rates where the rate's actually lower than you would pay on money that you get in a paycheck. So it's important to understand not only the cash flow that you receive in retirement, but how can you make it as tax efficient as possible? Because last time I looked, Bob, tax-free income is better than income I'm paying taxes on. You know, Ry, it doesn't, it amazes me every time. It's when we talked about this in the earlier segment, you know, just by cutting your taxes on an annual basis through the legal means available to you, you can have a five-star retirement versus a one-star. Yeah, and the one you have to really look at is if you have a lot of money in a retirement plan, we always call that your ticking tax time bomb because at 70 and a half, you have to start taking money out of your retirement plans. And when you do that, you have to pay income tax on that money, Bob. So you know, a lot of times if you retire before age 70, it may make sense to take some of that money out of those retirement plans early. Or you can convert that money into what we call a tax-free Roth IRA, which you might make your head spin, but there's a lot of things you can do with your retirement accounts so it's not a ticking tax time bomb by the time you hit 70 and a half. And the things you do proactively about that can save a lot of money in taxes. You know, Rye, the biggest threat I see to everybody's financial plan and the one thing that people never want to think about is the premature death of your spouse. Why is that a problem? Yes. We talked about this in the last segment, and it's so important to have your financial life organized. We can't stress it enough. And we have the, the age of technology, Bob, where you can basically get all of your financial information and you can put it in one place with one password. Because nothing I hate more is trying to get into all my different accounts because I can't remember one password after another. It's just too freaking confusing, Bob. There's some simple mistakes that can be made you know, early in your retirement that can have devastating impact on your retirement, right? For example, we met with a client yesterday who had a pension benefit, you know, from the state and they chose to have the benefit just on their life. There's no espousal benefit. His spouse is 10 years younger than he is. 
Well, as a result of not having proper advice when he made that selection, they're going to have to sell their sure home to, to fund retirement You know, once he's gone. Yeah, so it's so important just to tally up everything you have, um, figuring out where it is, figuring out how it all works together. And from there, Bob, you can really do some what we call that proactive planning. The other thing I would think about there too is like, when was the last time you had your will updated, right? I mean, most of us has probably been over a decade and you probably don't need to do dramatic things differently, but some tweaks to that will can be a big deal because right now, maybe you have uh, one of those brother-in-laws or sister-in-laws that you don't like anymore still is the trustee on your trust. You know, all these things need to be reviewed. Maybe your kids now are adults. They don't need guardianship anymore. So a lot of these things need to be updated over time as well, Bob. You know, Rob, if you're thinking to yourself right now, you know, you're talking about me. You're talking about my worry about stock market crashes. I don't have my beneficiary forms up to date. I haven't looked at my will. Matter of fact, I don't even have a will. I really haven't thought about these things. Well, I know that if I need to be financially healthy, that I need to know that my strategy is appropriate to what I need to achieve in my lifetime. I need to protect my family. Well, here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, this is a full holistic review where we're going to look at everything. It's the only review you'll ever need. You don't have to worry about what did I miss? What didn't I think about? You know, what are the things that uh, aren't in my plan? You know, all you need to do is gather all of your statements, stick them in a shopping bag, put them in a folder. You don't even have to open them. We'll review everything with you. We'll sit side by side. We'll help you to build that portal, which will allow you to not only review everything and see everything in real time, but you'll also have the ability to have it updated in real time, not just your net worth, but also your goals. And more importantly, how well you're progressing toward those goals. In addition, we're going to review your portfolio. We're going to look at the three key elements of a successful strategy. Are you truly diversified? Did your portfolio go down more than it should have in December because you're too overweighted in risk assets? Are you paying too much in fees? You know, I despise being overcharged. And there's nothing worse than finding out that your portfolio is currently overcharging you. Let's make sure we eliminate and identify all those hidden costs and fees in your current portfolio. And income it's really the key to filling that retirement gap once you retire. You know, everybody has that income gap when that paycheck's no longer coming in the door. And if you're already retired, you know what your number one goal is right now? I want to stay retired. Income is the key. We want to be certain that you have a repeatable, dependable income stream in your portfolio that's tax efficient. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan that will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years? That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement and you're one of the next 10 callers at 844-752-6692, that's call or text at 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. Nine two. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial radio. It's time for financial propaganda of the week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news, call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what did you find out there this week in the hard world of financial propaganda? Well, Ra, you know, I've been uh, reading for years about uh, how the Chinese were going to play the nuclear option on us by dumping all of our U.S. Treasury bonds because they're supposedly, you know, big buyers of U.S. Treasuries. So with the trade war, that's the race in the hole. They're going to dump all the treasury bonds they bought you know, over the last 20, 30 years. 
So, I mean, what does that mean in context of you know the financial world, our our, our plan? Because if they sell our U.S. debt, uh, that means that I guess interest rates would go higher. Oh well, yeah, I mean that's going to drive interest rates way higher, right? We're going to have no one who's going to be able to buy our debt. Our country's going to be bankrupt because no one will invest in America because of the Chinese. Now, here's the thing that these articles never talk about. Any idea what percentage of U.S. Treasuries are owned by the Chinese government? Of all U.S. Treasuries, I'm going to say, I'm going to take a wild guess, 10%. Well, you're close. Five. Okay. Five percent. So, so not much at the all. Biggest, yeah, not much at all. They're the biggest international creditor, but not by much. They're only two-tenths of percent more than Japan. Have you ever heard about Japan threatening to sell all their treasuries, right? <laughs> no, not at all. So guess, guess who is the largest buyer of U.S. Treasuries? Americans, Bob. Yes, right. It's U.S. citizens. You're the biggest buyer of treasuries, coupled with the Federal Reserve and with the U.S. government, uh, like Social Security. We own 90 percent of all the U.S. Treasury debt that's out there. But we're reading that article. You would think the Chinese own all of our debt. And like you said, it's only 5 percent. And that perception becomes real. And it's just like completely untrue, which is I mean, that's just propaganda, financial propaganda, Bob, at its worst. And that's what that's all about, right? Financial propaganda is about getting you to make bad decisions with your investment plan. It leads you to believe that rates are going to spike up, so you should sell your stocks, sell your bonds, sit in cash, waiting for that event to happen, where the fact of the matter is, if you got a big dumping from the Chinese, there's millions of people that are ready to buy U.S. Treasuries at a discount, and you'd have a huge rally in the bond market as a result. Yeah, the, uh, this reminds me too right now of this whole trade skirmish, whatever you want to call it, with China. Um, you know, we have like sixty-five billion dollars worth of tariffs right now between both countries. And if you look at the total GDP of our country and China together, it's thirty-four trillion dollars. That means those tariffs, Bob, are about 0.19 percent of overall GDP between both countries, which just means it's we're talking about very small numbers. In the scheme of things, which you know also makes it crazy why we're so focused on China when these tariffs don't really mean that much and no one's really talking about that. Well, that's incredible, right? Because that's the market is so much smarter than these people that write these articles. You know, we get an adjustment <laughs> in price, you know, to adjust to the fact that GDP may be a little bit lower, just a little bit, and the market's just a little bit lower than it was, you know, before these things came out. So, you know, it just it never ceases to amaze me. How there's, you know, article after article trying to get you to be a bad investor. Yeah, no, exactly right. And I think that's why it's so, so important to have a plan and not be dictated by what the headlines are, because they are deceiving. And a lot of times they do mislead you with the kind of decisions that you should be making with your portfolio. Which also brings me, Bob, to I found a great article this week that just looked at how poorly professional money managers have done. In fact, you know, can money managers be that bad? Well, I, I thought this is a great, great quote, but generating consistently terrible stock picks apparently is a skill. <laughs> and basically what this article <laughs> says is over the last 10 years, money managers have underperformed the index, the S&P 500, by 1.7% a year. So that means all those mutual funds you own and all those accounts that you own with managers, they're underperforming the market. Well, you know, it's not their fault, right? It's, it's humanly impossible to outperform the market because you're trying to, you know, pick the winners. And it's so difficult to pick the winners because there's so few winners. You know, if you look at all the stocks that are publicly traded, less than half actually outperform the underlying market. Most stocks return the same return as a treasury bill. So to pick those couple winners is almost impossible. So you got a question if you're looking at your portfolio. And ask your advisor this way, why do I still own mutual funds? Why do I still own these stock picking accounts when we know that these managers can't outperform long term? Because odds are, and you can't see it, you're paying more money for these managers and you're paying for underperformance. And Bob, where I come from, that's a really, really bad deal. You know, it's almost as if if you own mutual funds, you feel like you're indebted to the mutual fund manager that keep them employed. So maybe you're, you're just trying to keep the employment rate up in the United States by owning <laughs> mutual funds or separately managed accounts or hedge funds because they don't add any value net of their cost. And it's, you know, this also brings me to another article that I just read about hedge funds now fell back in love with the FANG stocks, which are Facebook, mm -hmm. Amazon, you've got Google in there. 
you have uh, Netflix, Apple's in there as well. And that's another yeah. problem, Bob, when you look at your portfolio is you probably own a lot of the same things and a lot of different accounts because these managers all end up buying the same thing. And that's a real problem. Right. Clearly, that's a problem. But how would someone know if they have mutual funds with, you know, I got the uh, this growth fund and this, you know, this fund is called a contra fund and this is a low price fund and this is a an investment fund. How do you know what's in the portfolio? It doesn't tell you on your statement. It just tells you the name of the mutual fund. Yeah, the key is you want to put everything out on a spreadsheet. That's what we do with our investment analysis spreadsheet. You want to put all your investments out there. Then you want to look under the hood to see what all these different funds that you own actually own. Because odds are you probably own way more Facebook than you actually knew about or Apple stock. And the key is you never want to have all your money concentrated in the same area. Because when those things do well, it's great, Bob. But when they don't do well, it's like you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You know, you got to find out about that concentrated risk ahead of time. Well, you know, Wall Street's always advertising to be diversified, but having a lot of different named mutual funds or investments in your portfolio doesn't necessarily mean that's the case, does it, right? No. And it's important to know because when the market sells off, it's kind of like when the tide goes out, that's when we can see who's been swimming naked. And we don't want you to swim <laughs> naked. So if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to know if I'm properly diversified. I have a real plan for retirement. Here's your shot to find out. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Bob and I will run for you at no cost. We're going to run for you our total financial master plan. All you need to do is bring in your statements, print them off the computer, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we're going to take all your financial information and we're going to give you a bird's eye view of the entire picture. And we're going to start looking at all those critical components. We're going to look at diversification. Do you own a lot of the same things? If the market goes down, are you protected? Were you protected in December when the market went down? We're going to show you how to protect, diversify, and bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in those mutual funds that underperform over time, those annuities that you own, those brokerage products. We're going to show you where those hidden costs are and how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money going into your pocket for retirement. And lastly, we're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the market's going up and down over time. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap when you're retired or if you're retired now. Then we're going to tie it all together and we're going to determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've been working on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Don't miss out. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, no strings attached. There's no plan unless you call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Ry Payne, and we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Let's find out. No pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, we're simple men. So obviously we like to keep it simple for you. And that's why we put together our new guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. We give you five simple ways to save money on taxes, everything from a health savings account to using Roth IRAs. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 888, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make invested. We show you how to do it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can subscribe to the show. You can get past episodes. Yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com and you can see that Bob is the real deal. 
And you can catch myself and other advisors from our firm on most of the major networks every week, everywhere from Fox Business News, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, just talking about our views on the economy, on the markets. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help us with questions this week, we have our producer, the man, Mark Haywood. With Chick and Mark, how you doing? Gentlemen, a pleasure as always. And I don't know about you guys, but I like this new schedule for the golf majors. I like the PGA Championship being this time of year because now I can block off a weekend in April, a weekend in May, a weekend in June, and a weekend in July, all for golf. Hey, Mark, didn't you just get married recently? I don't think that works anymore. <laughs> well, it's worth a try, right? The PGA made right, me do well, it. Good luck with that, buddy. Good luck. <laughs> oh, I better move on before I get in trouble here. Well, we have a couple of good questions, as always, that have come into us. Let's take one from Jerry, who writes in from the Upper West Side. He says, Bob, I'm retiring soon, and I ask my financial advisor when I should think about starting my Social Security. He seemed completely befuddled that I'd even ask him the question and didn't seem to have any insight at all. What am I missing here? Shouldn't that be a basic part of retirement planning? Hey, Jerry, that's a great question, and I got a question for Ryan. Ryan, how is it possible that someone could be your financial advisor and doesn't think your Social Security benefit is important? Yeah, that's a red flag right there because Social Security is a huge component to that income stream that you're trying to generate in retirement. Like That's retirement planning 101, Bob. You know, it drives me crazy, Ryan, that there's so many people out there that work for insurance companies, for banks and wirehouses, and they simply proclaim, I'm a financial advisor, where all they really are are product salesmen. How do you differentiate between a salesman and, a, and a, a true financial planner? Well, I think first off, they should be asking you questions about your retirement. And if they're not, they're talking about financial products. That's a red flag. The other thing is we always talk about is you want to work with a fiduciary, somebody by law who has to act in your best interest. And let's be real, Bob, a lot of these people that work at the banks and brokerage houses don't have to be a fiduciary. And you really need to find that out. I mean, let's take Social Security, for example, right? It's such a critical element in every one of your retirement plans. You know, first of all, how many different ways can a married couple take Social Security? How many different claiming strategies are there? I think I've seen the statistic, and I think it's like 100 different ways you can actually take Social Security, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, and each one of those ways is unique, and each of you are unique. And that's why it's so critical that you have a unique strategy based on your goals, because Social Security is a passive income stream, and it's extraordinarily valuable. Just to get $25,000 a year, right? how much would you have to have in treasury bonds to generate that kind of income? Oh, man, you'd have to have, I'd say, a million dollars. Yeah, a right? million dollars yeah. to generate 25000 You know, what if you're getting 50000 That's $2 million. Think about having $2 million in your portfolio as the equivalent of what you're getting. And if someone doesn't care enough about you to even know what your Social Security benefit is or that it's important, what's that tell you about that advisor? It's time to look elsewhere, Jerry. Um, and another important thing just to say about that too, Bob, is like you said, it's it's so unique to you. You can't just take your neighbor's strategy or your brother-in-law is taking it this way so you think you can take it that way. Your situation's different. Your tax situation's different. And all these things come into play. So you do need a unique strategy for yourself. Well, thanks for writing in, Jerry. Let's take another one from Frank in Spring Lake. Frank the Tank in Spring Lake. I digress. <laughs> uh, Frank says, Ryan, I'm already retired and I had planned on my wife working another three years, but we just found out that we're about to be grandparents for the first time. Congratulations, Frank. So she wants to retire this year to help take care of the baby. Uh oh, I see where this is going. How do I convince her that this is a bad idea? <laughs> well, be, be very careful, Frank. Yeah. Yeah, be very careful, Frank. And I think the first thing is, and this is an important thing is have a financial plan run, but do it together as a couple. You don't want to, we talked about this earlier on the show, you don't want to keep your spouse in the dark, Bob, because that's just a bad way to do things. And you know, if you have your spouse there, you run a plan together, you can see the benefits of maybe continuing to work as opposed to retiring and hanging out with the grandkids. Just saying. You know, right, that, that last two to three years that we call the financial red zone are so critical. You know, it may make sense to, you know, postpone time with the grandchildren to work a little longer. Or you might find out, 
what the heck am I still working for? We, we're set for life. We, you know, there's no way we can outlive our money. But, you know, the important thing is to have that in writing. Why work by guessing or, you know, like throwing darts? You know, you really want to know what your strategy looks like. And that's why our A to B strategy has been so critical because once you have it in writing, you have that comfort level and then you can go on living your life and not sitting there worrying about, uh, you know, your financial situation in the middle of the night. Yeah, there's nothing more unbiased than having that financial GPS, right? Because if you put a plan in place and you say, hey, this is the money we're going to need to live on. This is how we're going to do it. Let the plan tell you. Then it's unemotional. It's not based on you know, how you feel or things like that, but it's based on hard data because it says, hey, simply here, if you work two more years, look at the positive impact it has on your retirement or to your point, Bob, maybe you, don't, maybe you can stop working today, but let the plan tell you that as opposed to just going on a whim or trying to wing it. That's why a written plan is so critical, Rye, because life is about living. It's not about accumulating wealth. You know, once you've worked hard to get to where you are, know what the benefits are so you can enjoy every day. You know, it's surprising that uh, so many people don't realize what they're entitled to. And, you know, why guess? You know, why not know? Sit down with a professional, get that projection done, sleep well at night. So, Rye, let me ask you a question. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, in terms of being financially organized, where do you think Jerry and Frank stand? I mean, I got to say, there's a lot of planning has to be done here because you need to know when to take Social Security. You've got to get a game plan around that. And also, you need to sit down with your spouse and a financial planner to get the job done, Bob. I'm going to say a hard three across the board. Jerry and Frank need a lot of work. Boy, they sure do. If you're only a three, you're in big trouble. So let me ask all of you right now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how financially organized do you feel right now? And if you'd like to be a 10, of course, why wouldn't we want to be? All you have to do is be one of our next few callers and have saved at least 200000 for retirement because Ryan and I will create for you your own holistic view of what you own. And more importantly, we'll show you why you own it. We'll take all of your goals and display them in real time on your homepage so you can come in and drop in anytime you want to see not only what your goals are, to see how much you're worth, but to see how you're progressing towards those goals. You know, it's not about just having goals. It's about achieving goals. And that's what our 360 portal is all about. It's a full holistic review. It's the only review you'll ever need. It'll tell you what you need to do now so you don't have any regrets later in your financial life. In addition, we're going to look at your portfolio. We're going to break your portfolio down to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy diversification. You know, they talk about that ad nauseum on Wall Street. You know, are you truly diversified? Well, our analysis will tell you whether or not you have any overlap in your portfolio, whether you have any risk that you only realize in hindsight. We want to be certain that you de-risk your portfolio before any bad things can happen. Fees. We're going to look at costs. There's lots of hidden costs in those annuity contracts and those mutual fund prospectuses. No, I don't like to be overcharged. I know you don't either. Let's make certain that your portfolio is not overcharging you with hidden costs and fees. And income. We all need a dependable, repeatable income stream to fill that income gap that occurs once we retire. And if you're currently retired, well, our number one goal is to make sure we stay there. We want to stay retired. And income is the key. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan, which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over four decades? That's right. For 40 years, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as only a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. We have a couple slots left. If you give us a call right now and you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, that's call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at no cost at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. Here's this week's spotlight on no pain, no gain. 
It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Payne, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure that you have the most common sense advice that you can apply to your planning and investing. We just put together our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just gives you five simple ways to use tax strategies that save on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's bullish to 555-888. Five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. Everything from a health savings account to a Roth IRA, 401k. We show you how to save on taxes. Money saved on taxes is just as green as any money you can make invested. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555 888-888. Eight eight eight, and now we have a very special guest on the show. My colleague, Bob's colleague, Aaron Dessen, financial advisor, Payne Capital Management. Aaron, man, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Ryan, Bob, it's always a pleasure to be here. Good morning, guys. Hey, man, you're like a celebrity now. You did your your first national television uh, spot this week. Congratulations on that. So uh, we were honored to even do the show. Now that you're you're getting national coverage, man. <laughs> Well, actually, I did get a lot of comments that maybe I should stick to radio. <laughs> <laughs> you got skills for both, man. But this is our spotlight segment. You know, every week what we do is we dissect a real financial plan. And we uncover what we call the flaws or pain points so that our listeners can avoid the same mistakes if they're planning and investing. And you worked on a case recently. So why don't you break it down for us, Aaron? So recently, I met with a really nice couple, uh, recently retired. Um, and right before they retired, they went to a financial seminar and were pitched these annuities. So it was a really great sales pitch. They didn't really know what they were getting into. And now they come to find out in retirement, they want to access some of this money. And now they have huge penalties if they want to make any withdrawals. That's the problem with annuities is the uh, illiquidity factor, which you know, in retirement, you want to have access to your money, which to me is a little bit counterintuitive. Right. And, you know, they're in great shape with income from their pensions and Social Security, but they're doing some work on the house. They have some other things coming up where they need, you know, they need some cash and they need their retirement savings to be generating some income for them. So what we found is that, A, they're liquid, they're not generating any income, and B, they're actually charging them over three times as much as we're charging them. Wow. I'm looking at some of these expenses. Uh, I'm assuming these aren't annuities, but they're paying like three and a half percent a year in fees, which that's exorbitant. I don't care you know, what the promises that they're going to give you with that strategy. That is a lot of money going to the insurance company. It's completely ridiculous. Well, I think that's a problem you run into, Aaron. A lot of times you'll have someone who's not a fiduciary, who doesn't put the client's best interest first, whose compensation is solely commission generated, and they'll sell a product to make the most money they can, not caring, you know, what happens down the line. You know, as a fiduciary, you have to stay side by side with the client throughout the whole process. That was really one of the most troubling parts, Bob, is when we were asking them, you know, if they were in touch with the person that sold them the annuity and if they were able to get any more information. They said every time they asked them a question, they kind of just said, oh, you know, don't worry about it. You don't need to know what's in here. You know, yeah. it's good for you. You're doing the right thing. It's really... <laughs> don't look it's inside the box. Stand behind the curtain. Is that what they're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. really pretty pretty despicable. Well, I think the, yeah, the thing really you got to be careful, careful about here is, you know, these... And I think it's a good... These things are sold, as they say, not bought, right? Based on the fact that you're going to get income. And I think that's the right idea, right? You want to get income off your portfolio that you can live on because that's a very reliable thing to have income coming in retirement. The problem is with a lot of these annuities, not saying they're all bad, is you have to give up your principal. And that doesn't make a lot of sense in retirement to give up access to your capital. Yeah, right. It's not even just giving up your capital. I mean, liquidity is important, right? You have emergencies, you might have emergency surgery, you might have some health care issues, you might have some problems with your home where you need access to cash. And you certainly don't want to have to go out and borrow that money when you have it sitting in you know, a big pool of assets. But the biggest issue I have here is that the biggest threat to everyone is the cost of living, is inflation. It's hidden, it's insidious, and it happens. You know, what it costs to live today is going to cost twice as much, you know, 20 years from now. And all of you are going to live 20 years in retirement, maybe 40, so that you can't afford to have an investment that doesn't overcome inflation. And that's the biggest problem here that's not pointed out, and you only know it in hindsight. So the, the best thing we can do is highlight these things, you know, to protect all of you from falling into the same trap that this poor couple evidently fell into. You know, Bob, that's a really great point. I mean, not only are we reducing their risk and generating income 
taking their fees down, but we're also generating income that's going to be accounting for inflation as time goes on. Yeah. And investing is about a process, Aaron. You know, Rai, it's like it's if you're 100 percent right in all your investment choices, well, then you should have more money than Warren Buffett. And nobody has more money than Warren Buffett. So the fact of the matter is you're going to be wrong. But it's, you know, it's OK to be wrong. It's not OK to stay wrong. But the problem with these fixed investments, these annuities, is that you can't make the changes. Once you've made that decision, sometimes it's too late. But, uh, you know, we've been able to help some people out of situations like this. And hopefully we're able to help these folks, Aaron. Absolutely. In a big way. Yeah, that's the other thing is if you're in an annuity right now, a lot of times it does make sense to get out of it just because the ongoing fees are so high. And those are the kind of numbers we can we can help run for you. Aaron, as usual, another financial masterpiece. Great job putting together this plan. Well done. And as, if you're thinking to yourself right now, this is the kind of plan I need. I need to know the fees I'm paying. I want to know how I'm going to generate income in retirement. I have an annuity right now. I'm looking at an annuity. Is that the best place for my money? We can help you with these decisions if you call or if you text right now. We have a couple slots left. Myself, Bob, and Aaron will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this. All you need to do is get those statements together, put them in a folder, print them off the computer if they just got in the mail this month, whatever. Bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal, which is going to give you a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture. And then we can start looking at all those critical components. We're going to look at everything from fees. This couple is paying 3.5% a year on some of these investments. That's a lot of money not going into your pocket. We're going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio. So there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. You know, Do you have too much money sitting in cash right now earning nothing? Do you have too much money in the same place, in the same investments? We're going to show you how to bulletproof or protect your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at income. Are you able to generate enough income to cover your expenses in retirement? Are you optimizing the income on your portfolio? Are you doing it the right way? We're going to show you how to create a stream of income you can outlive. Then we're going to tie it all together in one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've been working on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. Of course, there's not going to be a plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Another great show this morning. Aaron, again, man, love having that booming voice on. You make it look good. You make us look good, which is hard to do, by the way. (laughs) Always a pleasure to be here, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Our pleasure as well, man. Bob, what do you have planned for the weekend? Golf, chilling at the Jersey Shore, the life of Bob, man. That's what I want. All right. I always enjoy watching the Masters and the major tournaments, but of course, like you always tell me, I don't understand. Why do you want to watch somebody else do an activity? Get off your duff and go out and do an activity. So I'll do a little of both this weekend. <laughs> that sounds like a good mix. Well, another great show. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.